Hi everybody, Chris Kreitcho here. I am recording a little screencast today to complement a blog post I published yesterday about how I use Obsidian for my work tracking workflow. So I'm going to demo that with this nice little empty setup. You can see basically how I structure my Obsidian vault, but I've created an empty copy of it so that I don't expose anything that I ought not. So you can see my basic structure for the vault for the work section of it is that I have notes, projects, and tracking. And tracking is the part I'm going to focus on for now. Some of the day I might show how I work with my actual broader notes system. In general, I think of things as a fractal system. The idea here is that anytime I'm working, I keep rough track of what I'm doing, sometimes in detail, sometimes at broad strokes level. But as I cover, and you can read the blog post for all the details, but as I cover at a high level, the big idea is that I want to be able to share my things I do, whether that's with my boss or with colleagues or whatever else, or even just remember for my own sake later. To do that, I need some kind of system that lets me track, well, what I've actually done. So what I do is I use these templates and I'll show you how I use each of them for day, week, month, quarter, and year. Quarter is a thing I've adopted since coming to LinkedIn because we do quarterly planning. When I worked other places that did things on a more traditional sprint level, I didn't bother with the quarter. I just kind of rolled things up to the year. And my year level note is a fiscal year note because LinkedIn runs on Microsoft's fiscal year calendar. Kind of annoying to be perfectly honest because June is a weird time to end the year. My actual workflow for Obsidian looks something like this. I pop open today's daily note. I should probably make a shortcut for this at some point, and it creates it. There's a little bug in Obsidian that the template doesn't generate with things in quite the right shape, but I now have a daily note that uses the template because I have configured Obsidian for its daily notes plugin to use a template. And in this case, the template location is specified as work tracking templates. My daily note uses that work tracking is where they go by default and work tracking templates. One day is the one that I want. So whenever I say go to today's today's daily note, it opens that whether it exists or not. Now, once I have this, you'll see there's a lot of to do's to fill out. And these just use Obsidian and others markdown highlighting to say, hey, fill this out to me. I could template this using the templater plugin, and at some point I may do that. If I do, I'll show you what that looks like. But the idea here is that I actually want to track things at the level of a week as well, and I want easy links to navigate between them. So this week, we run from the 7th to the 11th. And I could just do that, but normally I'll I'll actually do absolute links work tracking, and I'll use a shortcut to say it's going to be this week, so that when I am in normal editing mode or when I whoops when I am in a preview mode, I just see this, and I can create that, and then I also have a shortcut mapped, Command Control Shift T which allows me to pop up this little templater popover and say, give me the week. And I can also go ahead and generate, uh, I hit command N there, which was silly. Uh, I can also generate one for the month. So I want this also to be in work slash tracking. Now, the funny thing is, because of the way I normally work, I don't actually end up doing this quite this way normally, because I'm actually, ah, this is misnamed. Handy thing about Obsidian, it does rename things for you. So having done that, it updated the link back over here. I can see that it went to work 2022.11. Oh, and I maximized it. That is not what I was trying to do. I need to move that to tracking. Now it'll be in the right spot, and again, I can pop open my templater popover, do the same thing, create one for 2022.09 through 2022.12, which is this fiscal quarter. So I'll do quarter here, and then I'll add one more 
which is just 2023 fiscal year. You can do this for normal calendar years, obviously, and I would find that much preferable. Uh, once again, I'm going to generate the item here. I use these aliases to make it so that Obsidian will actually autocomplete what the item is. So here, now that these have absolute paths, and I always use absolute paths because it means it works no matter what editor I'm using. For example, I'll use IA Writer sometimes on iPad. Here, as I'm going back down the levels, I can just say, I'm going to grab 2020, oh, I mistitled this alias because I did the wrong thing there, 2023 fiscal year. So I can do this and select it, and now it'll auto-populate that for me. And then I can set some goals like record more screencasts this year. Now, here you can see that I have these detailed views. These, if I pop them open in my default app, which is Sublime Text, and I'm going to pull that all into view here and also close the background version of it, you can see that this is how I'm actually going to work most of the time. I use the fact that Sublime has a bunch of quick editing features to do things like this, where I can say, oh, I need to be able to update a bunch of different selections at the same time. Sublime and VS Code and Zed and others make that pretty easy. Sublime is the one I tend to do it with. So here, these are going to be nine. This syntax is just a normal Wikileaks syntax like you've already seen, but this is an embed. And this is actually the part that will be perhaps most interesting. I'll come back to that in a moment. This part that I'm doing right now is the sort of manual laborious part that I will probably script at some point. Also, this isn't right. This should be uh, running. Clearly, I'm very good at calendars. This should be 10 through 12, not 9 through 12. How do calendars work? Um, so I'm going to save that. And then when I come back over here, we can see that I now have a uh, high level view in the details of this month view, which needs to be renamed. It needs to be 10 through 12. <laughs> And notably, once I've done that, anything that references it will, like I said, get automatically updated. This down here is Obsidian's idea of block embeds. That's what this syntax here is. And if I go to the editing view, uh, view, and I toggle source mode, you can get Obsidian to show you this as well. I normally just edit in live preview mode instead. And that's something you can set in your editor. What's the default editing mode, source mode or live preview mode? This embed should look a little different. I need to update these templates. This is going to link to outcomes. And the reason for that is actually the thing that made Obsidian work in this system for me in the first place at all. And that is, okay, if I pop over now, let's go back to live preview. <laughs> Ah, uh, what did I do? Don't save. Nah, now I have lost where I was. That's fun. This is a, oh, this is the one. Okay. Toggle live preview mode again. And this is the wrong place for this. I want the embed not to be in the title that I am not actually showing, but right here. And what that does is it will embed a, not the whole note. I should take a step back. These blocks allow you to embed a chunk of a different note or the whole of a different note in this note, which is super powerful. I use it in my regular note system for working with quotes that I want to embed in a note that I'm building up. But you can see this references outcomes, which has summary and artifacts. And if we come over to the actual corresponding note here, and we'll need to make some edits to it, but down at the bottom, I have this section, outcomes with summary and artifacts in it. And if I type summary, made this screencast, and then I go back to this overview, it will have this embed updated, and it'll update in more or less real time. So if I split this right, now over here, I can close it and look at the high-level view, 
It's not quite real time, and that's fair. Posted it to YouTube. Did the blog post that goes with it too. You can see there's a little bit of a lag, but it does update quickly. For my purposes, that's broadly good enough. This is actually not done yet, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and open this back in the default app. For each level I'm working at, I have to do this same basic dance. Again, that's a thing I'm going to want to fill in over time. Uh, this will be better done in Obsidian, which will auto-complete it for me. So I will say 2022.12 because I know that I just have this link here. I'll expand it. When I pop back up to this level, I have this summary as we've seen. Looking here, I have the same set of kind of detailed views as I do in this level. When I talked about having fractal organization, this is what I meant. Every level has the same basic structure to it. So if we look back through each of these notes again, here's the quarter level view. Here's the year level view. It has details for each quarter in it. And those you can see will link to outcomes if it exists. Uh, now in this case, I need to update all of these. So this needs to run from, in this case, it would have been 2022 for the first eight of these. And in this case, oh, nah, uh, nope, same mistake I made before, to 12, we'll do that. It actually, in this case, that would be wrong. It would have been 07 through 09. But for our purposes right now, this is fine. Uh, what did I do? I typoed something in here. This should say 10 through 12. Nope, and tw 10 through 12. And then I need to edit the block embed, same thing. Oh, I, I see what I did. That was very silly. I did them all in place. You can see this again links down into outcomes. If I pop down into the month level view here, I'm gonna have the same thing. I've got my list of goals, just as I do up here. And I tend to organize those in terms of what I'm trying to get done this quarter and what kind of extraneous stuff comes across my plate. And at this level, same thing. And I tend again to pop these open and say, oh, I know these are all going to be, I can actually just select all of them. I can say 22.11, the different weeks in place. I'm only going to show the first week in this case, well, not even the first week of the month, uh, is going to be this week. So we'll say again, 07 through 11. And here what I should actually do is just select all of these. So I can say 07 through 11. And I would do the same thing for each of them. And again, outcomes and summary, because when I look at this next view, down here I have outcomes and summary and quarterly deliverables and goals. And likewise, if I pop this open, default app, I'm gonna say for these ones, 2022.11.07 and so on. I'm going to skip down here to today, which would be 2022.11.09. And again, we have now I've created this note. It was the first one I created because it was today's daily note. Again, goals organized the same way. I list my meetings because it turns out for me, if I don't, I forget things because calendars and I are not friends. And then I'll kind of log breakdown throughout the day of what I did. This helps me make sure that I'm actually doing an appropriate amount of work, neither too much nor too little. Too little is rarely the problem for me, but keeping track of how much I work does help me not work too much. And then I summarize the outcomes. And I also have a goal of standing at my standing desk. I don't necessarily make five hours a day. Many days I don't even make one, but I do try because it makes me healthier. So today I can say, recorded this screencast. And this is where the real power is. And presumably I would have link to screencast. And this would be some YouTube link, right? When I come back up here, https colon slash slash example dot com slash some YouTube link, because I don't actually care about the details. These exist at this level. So at the end of the week, I look at this and I just roll it up into a summary. And I can literally just copy and paste some of these things out of it. Obsidian is smart enough to do that. And I can drop the extra artifacts and summary headings. And I, 
normally would just do that by copying and pasting more smartly. I distinguish between summary and artifacts because sometimes it's helpful to have a high level overview of what I did in the course of the week and then just quick links to pull requests, documents I wrote, reviews I left, things like that as a separate level. So I pull those from each of these. And then again, when I roll up at the end of the month, now I have this summary. And again, I can pop that into this level as appropriate. At each decreasing level of granularity, I just decrease how much I include there because it may not be nearly as relevant. And it's hard to see sometimes at a daily level what is actually going to end up bubbling up into the kind of thing that I want to roll up into. Here's what I did this quarter. Sometimes things grow after you start working on them. Sometimes they don't go where you thought they were going to go. So I just write down what I did at the end of each day and then at the end of each week and the month and the quarter and the year. And eventually then, when I go to summarize my year, when I go to write up my, here's my annual review information for my manager, I have everything I need. And at no point do I have to try to dredge up, okay, what was I doing nine months ago? Because I have it all written down. I've been doing this for years. I was using Bear to do this for a long time. The difference is this embed. This is super, super great because I never have to copy and paste or try to keep things in sync or, oh yeah, I did actually do this thing the other day and I want to pull that back up into the next level of note. Well, if I decided not to log something here originally and then I want to include it there, I just include it here and the month level summary will get it automatically. That's all I really have to talk about for today. That's been plenty long. Hope that was interesting and maybe a little bit informative for a way that you might work as well. And hopefully I'll do some more of these about working effectively in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody.